for Curry. The man is special. One of one. 64 times with 40 points. This wasn't supposed to happen. I don't think you guys heard me. This was not. That Curry barely in his hands and right in the bucket. Curry one more time. Herb Jones was with him, but not close enough. Along with Dario Saric. Steph Curry just has that mindset. Good for offensive rebounds. They'll give up some. I don't know who's playing the four. Jesus Christ. Between Trace and Saric. Oh, Steph Curry. Another three. 16 of the Warriors, 18 points. Yeah, I think you get the point. I can confirm that these are in fact two NBA teams. And no, the New Orleans Pelicans aren't tanking for a lottery pick this year. As a matter of fact, they're supposed to be contending for a title. Now you might be thinking, something must be off. There must be some caveat. Well, yes, there is. The Golden State Warriors were missing five times NBA All-Star and four-time NBA champion Klay Thompson who's only the second greatest shooter the world has ever seen, along with two open roster spots as well as one of the best young players in the league in Jonathan Kuminga. If someone doesn't stop Steph Curry soon, we might be witnessing one of the single greatest performances measured over the course of an entire year. Now the Pelicans were missing Brandon Ingram who's put up 22.5 points per game so far this season, as well as Trey Murphy who averaged 14.5 points per game last season. In 2015 and 2016, Steph Curry shocked the world and influenced an entire generation of basketball players, including one man who's been crowned by many as one of, if not the greatest basketball player of all time. So, if this does in fact happen, not only will it usher in a new era of Golden State basketball, but it also crushes the narrative. You know, one-dimensional, only a shooter, only plays one end of the floor. Yeah, that narrative as well as when it's all said and done, where these guys fit on the list of the greatest players of all time. After traumatizing the squad in Houston, Steph Curry the very next night went into New Orleans on the second leg of a back-to-back -back and bullied that's right, bullied a team pegged by the experts to be a title contender and led by lead bully ball CEO Big Z. Big Z, aka Zion Williamson, was finally healthy after missing more games in his career than he's played and considering this is a playoff team without him, the Pelicans are expected, by some at least, to be a potential sleeper in the West. Steph Curry woke up this season and chose violence. Now, as much as I'd like to give Steph Curry all the credit, we can't forget that he has a weakness. Yes, it's the unfortunate truth. Steph Curry's weakness is that this team does at times have to play without him. And what happens during that time is pretty important. The front office recognized his weakness and clearly addressed it for the season. How? This is where Chris Paul comes in. The running tracker on the second unit led by CP3 is a plus 31 when Steph Curry is not on the floor. So far, the Warriors bench is outscoring opponents by an average of 8 points per game. So now Curry doesn't have to worry about the second unit and whether or not they can maintain the score and not lose ground. They are actually building on leads he creates or flipping the switch when the first unit falls behind. What's crazy about this is that CP3 is nowhere near having full control when he's out there, which speaks to the amount of room that remains for growth. In this particular play, Chris is letting Clay know he's there, and as the point guard, they let him control bringing the ball up. Clay Thompson, on the other hand, not only ignored Chris, but eventually ended up turning the ball over. The Warriors hired Chris to bring up and distribute the ball using the Warriors' weapons as efficiently as possible. While he won't be perfect, <laughs> let him make that decision and live with the consequences. So far, he's been A+. Now imagine what this does when Curry realizes he doesn't have to shoulder the entire load on the floor while keeping his bench players motivated enough to compete. Instead of orchestrating a comeback for when he returns, Steph Curry now only needs to focus on what he has to do when he's out there on the floor. 
because the bench are holding their own. His job is now much simpler and with his mental vitality which has built up over the years to handle all that I've just mentioned, only having to focus on what he has to do out there on the floor in his 36 minutes is like shooting fish in a barrel at this point. Chris Paul finished with 13 points off the bench, 6 rebounds, 5 assists and 2 steals while going 6 of 10 from the field. Doesn't hurt that he was a plus 17 either. The addition of CP3 doesn't only unlock the players on the bench, it allows Steph Curry to unlock the most dangerous player the world has ever seen. So how did the Warriors match up against the Pelicans? This is where Draymond comes in. Big Z had all of 19 points, 5 rebounds and 3 assists in a total of 30 minutes going 7 of 15 from the floor. While this isn't terribly efficiency, Williamson gets his points within 2 feet of the rim by putting opponents into the basket. Unfortunately for him, Draymond isn't exactly a pushover. Dre locked up the biggest players in the league with more reach than Zion, so for him this isn't a big deal. This was Williamson's lowest scoring performance so far in three regular season games, so if this is any indicator of the Warriors improved ability to defend, this could spell trouble for the rest of the league. One important factoid about Draymond is that the better the team is that you put around him, the better he plays as Dre isn't the type of player to watch his teammates play hard while sitting on the bench eating tacos, as much as he might enjoy that. Draymond finished the night with 6 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists and 1 block while keeping Big Z in check in only 22 minutes. Imagine what he'll do when his conditioning allows him to play over 30. Outside of Steph Curry, the only other starter to hit double figures was Moses Moody. With Klay Thompson being listed as questionable with knee soreness, Steve Kerr trusted Moody to fill the gap and just as expected, he was up to the task. While he started out slow in the first quarter, it was in the second quarter where Moody made his presence felt and what he did was somewhat unexpected. Chris Paul might be rubbing off on these guys more than we thought because Moody's facilitating in New Orleans really spurred the Warriors. With Moody diming his teammates, the Warriors went on an 11-2 run in a 3-minute span that saw the Warriors go from being down 1 point to creating a double-digit lead. It would be this initiative by Moody that the Warriors built on when they came back out in the third quarter to blow the Pelicans out of the water. Moody finished with 13 points, 4 assists, 3 rebounds and a plus 18 going 5 of 8 from the field on the night. Moses Moody in the starting lineup gives the Warriors a significant boost and with enough confidence, we could see him emerge as a go-to player that can close close games for the team. The biggest stat of the night for the Warriors is that they absolutely dominated the Pelicans on the boards, pulling down 64 rebounds to the Pelicans 39. Trace Jackson Davis initially thought to have a double-double, pulled down 9 of those to go with 13 points and a big time 4 blocks while shooting 5 of 9 from the field. On top of that, he was only playing for 20 minutes. Now Trace being a big man is looking to get a better field goal percentage than the 55% he had against the Pelicans. He had a few missed layups but that comes with being a rookie and adjusting to the league. I've got no doubts that as he gets more reps under his belt, he'll be putting a lot of pressure on the rim. At the same time, getting this many rejections shows you how much experience he has and what he can bring to the table going forward. Trace does a superb job in the two-man game with Chris Paul and while he can improve as a finisher, he's a big improvement for the Warriors. His presence in the paint is a deterrent that the Warriors will rely on heavily as the season progresses and is a big part of the reason the second unit does so well. If he keeps it up, he might get a ton of playoff experience this season. What better way for the scariest team to show what they're capable of doing than to have the chef shoveling another 42 points down the throats of another one of the better teams in the league? Steph Curry is still on fire to start the season, shooting 7 of 13 from 3. If you caught the game, you might have even heard the commentators on the Pelicans game plan for Steph Curry. Do not let him get that shot. Stay with him. Well, uh... 12 games in. DiVincenzo over the line. Five minutes, and that makes him 8 of 13 over his last two and a half games or so. Step from the corner. The play, here's Curry in the first quarter, hits again. Curry, three for three. Who's going to do that? It's always easier said than done when it comes to guarding Curry. 
The man is the worst nightmare combination of stamina and shooting that you can possibly come across. From the jump, Curry was automatic from distance and gave the Pelicans notice. He hit 7 of 13 from 3 and went 15 of 22 overall, which means he went 8 of 9 inside the arc. Why are you guys playing with Steph? He grabbed 5 boards and had 5 assists and all of this was done in 30 minutes. This man is a serious problem and is nowhere near any sort of physical decline. You better believe teams are taking notice because this 35-year-old version of Steph is just as threatening, if not more so, as any other version of Steph we've ever seen. Unfortunately, not everything was a highlight. Andrew Wiggins is still having a slow start to his season and hasn't really made a huge impact. You can see Kerr making adjustments slowly where Wiggins only played 20 minutes. I can only imagine how many he'd play if Jonathan Kaminga was available. Wiggins in the first quarter didn't make any of the shots he attempted and unfortunately seems to be regressing in a year that really should see improved play out of the former first overall pick. If this play keeps up, mark my word, as long as Kaminga can remain healthy, he'll have that starting spot in four weeks. After trading Poole, the Warriors aren't going to be paying a long-term contract player over $28 million a year to come off the bench. That being said, I'm hoping he returns to form sooner rather than later. Sharich is still struggling with his shooting, but still putting out the effort. I think ever since that preseason game where he missed those clutch free throws, we got to see something about Sharich that is kind of showing itself to be more than a one-off problem. If he can improve, we'll likely see TJD getting more of those minutes and Sharich relegated to Jamichael Green's role where he barely gets off the bench by the end of the season. Gary Payton II was the only other player in double figures with 10 points and 4 rebounds while going 4 of 10 from the field and a plus 17 in 20 minutes of playing time. Considering his hot streak from distance the other night, he made 6 attempts from 3 against the Pelicans, knocking down 2 in the process. All facts considered, the Warriors are looking even better than they did in 2022. Both conferences are tough, but if the Warriors continue to play as they have and improve as expected, there's no reason to think that they can't overcome the Denver Nuggets and go on to win the title. Set your calendars because the night of November 8th is when Golden State goes up against Denver. If nothing, it will be the single most important game of the regular season for the Warriors. Do you think this start by the Warriors is sustainable or is this some type of fluke? Post your thoughts in the comments below, but before that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all your notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish.